concern about what, what we use our wool for, what we could use it for, um, and I think that is welcome. Um, you will hear, you know, sheep farmers aren't getting a very good price for their wool, and that, that is a bit of a challenge and a frustration to them, because we're constantly bombarded with being told to be more environmentally aware and, and friendly in what we do, and yet we're, we have this low-carbon product that's purely natural, and we're, we do very little with it. So, I mean, it's wonderful. I think this is probably the, the most added value you could do to wool, um, and, it, and it's fabulous to see. Um, I have been, I have been fortunate over the maybe last couple of years to be gifted one or two little lovely items um, of felting, uh, felt work, um, some little pictures. Um, but I think this, my most recent piece, Elizabeth, there you are, um, this gifted to me by um, Elizabeth Redden, Redding from, uh, who I know from a former, former life and uh, yes. different, different <laughs> aspects. We're not going to too far away from each other. Um, but what made this particularly special for me was that it was made from wool from our own sheep. So, I mean, the circular piece was, was perfect. And I, mean, it was, I think pre-COVID that the, the it fleece was, was handed yeah, over. And just before. in the last couple of months, we, we met at the Tullamore show. And uh, it's, it's just lovely to, to know that, you know, it, it's fleece from our own sheep. And look how beautiful it can be crafted into. So thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth, very much for that. I think this, the skill that's needed in preparing the wool, um, in dyeing it and then forming it into something beautiful is, is really quite something. Um, and certainly the book highlights this in great detail. And I think readers, because you're walked through every stage of, um, of the process, from selecting even the right sheep breed, which will determine the type of wool that may come off the sheep, um, all the way through to how to manage it, the, the shrinkage that's involved, the dyes, the drying, and I suppose the, the, the preparing is, is, is quite significant. So I really am in awe, genuinely, of the community of felters and, and indeed sheep farmers who support this um, and who have contributed to this book. Uh, and I hope you enjoy reading and, the, and meeting many of the farmers and the crafters in the pages in the book as much as I did, um, because I think it is, I think a lot of us probably aren't aware of the possibilities that exist and you can learn quite a bit of the story um, and, and the interest in this art form, which really has actually been around since the, the Neolithic period. You know, it's, it's about 12,000 years old, um, some of this, you know, of this, this craft work um, and certainly, you know, there's food for thought in that, I think. I really do look forward to you all um, flourishing in what you do and, and in your craft. Um, and I, I'm particularly encouraged by your desire to explore the use of Irish wool for the purposes of felt making. I know not all wool is suitable for all types of, of felt making, but um, I think where it is, it's great if you, if you can, you can use Irish wool. And certainly exploring the uses of Irish wool um, in the wider Irish economy is something I'm particularly passionate about. I commissioned a study on the feasibility of, of Irish wool um, and its uses. Um, and we now have an Irish uh, Grown Wool Council formed, which will explore this, uh, these ideas further. So it's great to have uh, some of the members here today. And I suppose the, the, the many potentials from the use of wool, um, not only in crafting, you know, whether it's um, sweaters and blankets or, to, or, or in felting, but also there are other maybe less known uses that might, will, will come out of all of this work, whether it's for insulation and indeed even fertilizers. Um, so, the potential is vast here. We just really have to try and harness it in the best possible way. So I think wool has so many benefits for um, beneficial properties for society. As I said, it's low carbon and it fits in very snugly, part of the pun, into the circular economy too. And you know that's what we're all about these days. So whether any of you have felt it a, a picture or a handbag or some a beautiful hat or even chocolates, um, I think it's just. Um, I think everything you, you want to know about how to do this is, is in the book, and I think you can see what can be done on the walls around us. So, but thank you very much. A real pleasure to be here. I hope you enjoy the, the exhibition. It's open until for the remainder of October. October, I think. yeah. Brilliant. 29. So spread the word. Yeah. Will the book be available for people to buy here as well? Do yes, as well. Great. Yes, okay, as well. well. We'll push that out and, and online as well. Online is important, yeah. so we'll, we'll certainly. If you haven't bought the book, you certainly do buy the book because um, 20 years in existence is a great, very long time. Mm -hmm. um, it's wonderful to have Michelle and Liz here, two of the founding members, and you know, here's to the next 20 years and beyond. So, listen, thank you so much. Pleasure to be here and enjoy the exhibition. Thank you. Thank you.